Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. This morning I'm servicing our Farm All Super C. I service all of our tractors once a year, go completely through all the checks. I usually do it in May, but this year work got ahead of me, and so I finally gotten around to doing the Super C this morning in July. Servicing a, an old tractor is completely different than servicing a modern car. Heck, I think my truck's got four grease fittings total on it. This has at least 20. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the things you should look at, at least on an annual basis for your old Farmall tractor. Not only the Super C, but this applies to other models as well. The first thing you need, and I can't stress this enough, is an operator's manual for your tractor. It's easy to find reprints online and there's so much information in here. Heck, there's 50 pages just in this manual on lubricating and maintaining the tractor and this diagram is really where it's at. This shows all the maintenance points on the tractor and the pages that follow it. It shows you how often you should do it, how to do it. If I didn't have this diagram, I'd surely forget some of the things that need to be checked. I change the oil once a year, even though we use this tractor every day, it only gets about 100 hours on it per year. And changing the oil is simple, it's just like changing the oil in a car really. You just loosen the drain plug, take it out. Now before I drop the oil, I usually run the tractor around and get it warmed up so that any dirt that's in the engine gets suspended in the oil and the oil flows easier. You can tell this tractor has been used in the winter, it's got some milky oil, which is not uncommon. I usually leave this to let it drain for a good long time while I'm doing other things before I close it up and put fresh oil in. These old canister filters are common on old farm malls and before you take them off you have to take this drain plug out so that the oil drains out of the filter housing and doesn't make a mess when you pull the can off. And then to take the can off you just take this bolt out here it's awful hard to change the oil in these things without making a mess. I found that out. And here we have it. Can filter element. After you take the can off, just clean up around it. And then here's a part some people miss. There's a groove where the can seats in here. And that groove has a sort of O-ring gasket in it that seals the can to the base. You want to make sure you dig that out. And dig it right down to the clean metal and then put a new ring in so the filter seals properly. And to get that groove clean, I run a paper towel in front of a screwdriver in there to get all the dirt out of it. These things will leak if you don't do it properly. I've had problems with them leaking in the past, so I always take some extra time with this step to get everything cleaned up. And now you just take the new O-ring, dip it in some oil to lubricate it so that the can doesn't catch and tear it when you put it on, and you have to work it into the groove. You want to make sure that it's all seated evenly into the groove or else the can will catch it and tear it. I've had that happen before. Old filter out. And I usually pull this, wipe it off, wipe off the filter housing, wipe out the inside of the filter housing. I use oil filters from Napa which Wix is the same thing, it's just got the Napa label on it. I used to use Fram filters until I found out how crappy they are. There's a great video where a guy cuts apart the different filters and looks at the pleats inside and how strong the end caps are and how well they'll hold up. Fram filters are pretty much garbage, so you pay a little extra, you get what you pay for. You just slip that in there, put that on and you're ready to put it on the tractor. Easy peasy to put it back on. Just set it on, screw it in. There's a copper sealing washer at the top of these. I found that they don't need to be replaced very often, but you want to check for leaks when you start it back up. Put a wrapper to a Teflon tape on the drain plug for the oil filter housing. Wipe her off and away we go. Put the pan drain plug back on. There is a sealing washer on these more modern ones. Some of them are just old pipe plugs which you wrap with Teflon tape. I wrap these with Teflon tape too because I don't replace the washers and I just view it as a belt and suspender seal. New oil goes in on the top breather which pokes through the hood on these tractors. And what I do is I open up the level petcock 
and leave it open as I put oil in. When I see it start to drain out, then I know it's full. I run Rotella T 1540 diesel oil in all of our old farm oils. Now, if you get on the old tractor discussion forums and you bring up what kind of oil is best for your old tractor, you'll get a million different responses. And I'm not an expert on the properties of oil, but most of the experts say this is the oil to use, so I stick with it. And I've been using it for years, never had a problem. We got oil running out of the pet cock, so we close it up. And then we start up the tractor so that the oil filter housing can fill with oil while it's running, and then we'll check the level again. After you run the tractor a bit, open the top pet cock again, make sure you still have enough oil after the filter housing filled, and it's streaming out, so we're good. Next is the air cleaner. This tractor has an oil bath air cleaner. Here's the intake up top, down this pipe, and into the oil bath element here. There's a steel mesh wound in here. There's an oil reservoir down here. When the tractor's running, the incoming air forces the oil up to coat the steel mesh and cleans the air coming into the carburetor here. So we need to change the oil on this every so often because it gets full of dirt and a lot of times water gets in and sits in the bottom. There's two pieces in some of these. You just lift the top piece out and then you can dump the oil. That oil is pretty clean. But what happens is you get some water in the bottom. That's that white stuff is oil filled with water. And then the grime collects in the bottom too. You don't want to leave that water in there. You want to wipe it off because it'll rust out the bottom of this if it sits there too long. Actually, you can see where I've patched this one because water did sit in it too long with JB Weld around in here and in here because they develop pinholes in them. And we fill her up with new oil. The oil level is shown right here. And I use any old cheap oil. It's not real fussy what you use in here. You just want it to be clean. These old tractors come with built-in rust proofing because they leak just about everywhere and it keeps things from rusting. The next thing you want to do with the air cleaner is just pop this intake off and they come off with varying degrees of ease. And make sure this mesh inside isn't all clogged up with crap. I just use a little steel brush to clean out the mesh. Now the hydraulic system on these old tractors differ by generation. The H's and the M's started out with a belly pump in its own reservoir, completely separate from the transmission. And those are real easy to service. They don't have a filter in them. You just need to check the level once in a while. This generation of tractors has what's called a touch control system, which is a separate hydraulic block right here. It runs a couple rock shafts here. And then there's a remote that goes back to the hitch. It doesn't have remote hydraulics in the sense that you can hook something up to it. So with these tractors, the checks are real simple. There's a level plug here, and then there's a filter here, which is a washable type. It's a cylindrical metal screen that goes into the sump down at the bottom of this, and you just take it out and you can wash it out. Now I replaced this one a couple of years ago because it's got, it had a hole in the old filter. This is a temperature sender that comes off of it that goes up to the temperature gauge for the system on the operator's platform, and here's the drain plug. So what we do with this on an annual basis, we take off this fill plug and check the level. To do that, you start up the tractor and make sure everything's in its fully retracted position. All Both rock shafts up here, and you want the hitch cylinder all the way retracted like that and then you take off the level plug and check it i know that safety sam on youtube is going to be after me for standing in front of the tractor while i start it oh well people got to have something to comment about you got to be a little bit careful with these level plugs because sometimes there's trapped air in the system so you loosen them up and you listen for air escaping you don't want the plug to blow off in your face and get covered with oil There was the air. And you want to be real careful. I seal these with Teflon tape. You don't want any of that to get inside. And this one's really low because it leaks at the remote valve 
on the other side of the tractor. On our tractors that have true remotes where you can hook up the hay bind or whatever implement you're using, I use Accela Hytran, which is the Case IH current brand. It works so much better than generic hydraulic oil. I'm a big believer in spending the extra money to get the good stuff and you'll thank yourself later. But in these tractors that have completely separate hydraulic reservoirs, I use pretty much whatever I have on hand. And <laughs> This is some Kubota oil that a uh, neighbor gave me. So I put it in and it works fine. It's still a lot better than what they had when this tractor was made. You fill these reservoirs up to within a half inch of the level and fill plug and put the plug back in. More rust proofing. On a lot of old tractors, the transmission and the final drive are in the same housing and share the same oil. And on the newer old tractors, the hydraulic oil is also shared and there's a hydraulic pump and a filter right in the housing. On those, you need to change the filter regularly. They're uh, paper element filters. You just pull them out and put a new one in. This does not have a transmission filter. The transmissions are really simple in this vintage tractor. There is a fill port right here on the operator's platform. It takes a three quarter inch drive ratchet to take it out and put extra fluid in. There is only a single drain on these tractors, which is at the bottom of the bull gear housing, differential housing here. And then there's a level plug right here that you use to check the level. Now other tractors will have a dipstick in the top cover that you check the oil with. They vary. But with this one, it's real simple. I don't worry about the transmission oil too much in this tractor because after I first got it, I took the cover off and I flushed all the sludge and the metal shavings out of the transmission, cleaned out all the lubrication troughs which run along the top of the transmission to lubricate the bearings. So I know this is in pretty good shape, but I always check the level. And it's full if it runs out when you pull the plug. And it's good. If the transmission does need to be topped off, I use ADW90 transmission oil, which is commonly available. No special brand. The original manufacturer's recommendation was for 80 weight oil, so that's pretty close. You want to clean out the sediment bowl. And first you turn off the fuel to do that. Turn that off. Loosen up this nut. This is called the bale on the bottom of the bowl, and there it goes. Take it off. It's got a lot of sediment in the bottom of it, so I'll go dump this fuel and clean it out. This sediment here is from the tank on these old tractors. You inevitably have some rust in the tank, and it winds up in the sediment bowl. And if it's stained at all or you can't get it out, a little carburetor cleaner will loosen that up, and then you can wipe it off. I like these to be nice and clean. There we go. Now something I didn't mess with that's in this is there is a screen up on the top of the filter, a flat round screen, which is replaceable, and there's a cork gasket that seals it up. I don't take those out unless I have a problem with flow, and I don't. Turn the valve back on and check for leaks. Now often these won't fill if the carburetor float has closed off the needle valve, and this one's just dripping. You gotta loosen them up a little bit, let some air in, and then they fill up. And when they overflow a little bit, then you just tighten them down. That one's overflowing. And you just tighten it down. And check for leaks. Nothing like a nice, clean sediment bowl. It's the simple things in life, right? The other thing you can check, and I'm not going to, is where the fuel line comes into the carburetor here. There is a cylindrical screen just inside where it screws in. And that screen can clog up. In fact, one time I was working in the field of this tractor and it quit, and it turned out this screen was clogged up, so I took it out and cleaned it. You wanna check the coolant level when you do service. This is a pressurized system on this tractor, which means you don't wanna open the cap when it's hot or you could have hot coolant spray out and scald you. Still had a little pressure on it, even though it's pretty cool. The coolant won't be up to the top because it needs room to expand when it gets warm. Maybe I will top this off with a little bit of coolant. This is just a 50-50 mix of coolant and water. For this tractor, the manual says that you want to be two and one quarter inches below the top of the filler neck with the coolant level. You can certainly fill it fuller, but it's just going to overflow out the overflow pipe when it gets warm. 
and so we're good. It actually did need quite a bit of coolant. Glad I checked that. You want to go around the tractor and check all the belts and the hoses. Generator belt, generator belt is loose. Need to tighten that up. Radiator hoses, I replaced all these when I bought the tractor, they're good. Replace the belts too, that just needs to be tightened. And you also want to check the hydraulic hoses for cracks, wear, all that sort of thing. I've also replaced the hoses on the remote, and these are the only hydraulic hoses on this tractor, so they're good. And I guess this generator belt will have to stay where it is because it doesn't have any more adjustment on the generator. It's a little loose, but it'll be all right. I always open up the distributors too when I do service because there's nothing worse than a tractor not starting from points that haven't been adjusted or need filing. The cap on this one's so old that it still has the old IH logo on it. Can't get those anymore, but it works fine. You check for wear on the contact points or dirt, clean out the distributor cap, then take the rotor off. Check that, make sure you have a decent surface. That's where it makes contact. I'll probably sand that off a little bit. And then there's a breaker chamber cover here, breaker chamber cover, and it's got a gasket on the inside to keep moisture out of that. You wanna make sure that gasket's there. The last thing you want in the breaker chamber is moisture. Now these breaker chambers are a pain in the butt to work in because there's no easy way to get into them. But you do want to check the points. You want to check the gap on the points and you want to take a look at the points and these are slightly pitted so I'm going to give them a little dressing. You want to check the points gap by turning the tractor over until the rubbing block on the points hits the high point on the cam and I usually just do that by turning the fan. There. There, the points are fully open now. That rubbing block's riding on the high point of the cam. The first thing we want to do is dress the points and then we'll check the gap. Pierce will say you need a points file to dress the points, but I use 400 grit sandpaper, which is really smooth and fine stuff. And what I'll do is I'll fold it up and pass it between the points so that I ensure that I have two surfaces that are mated properly. If the points just need to be cleaned up, say they're glazed from sitting for a while, you can use a dollar bill and do the same thing. Just pass it back and forth between the points. Boy, these points are really buggered up. It looks like I should invest in a new set. This tractor starts and stops a whole lot during a single day and that puts wear on things in different ways. These points need adjustment, so it's an 020 inch feeler gauge is what the gap should be. So I slide the feeler gauge in there. And these are always real fun to get right on. They're kind of a pain because everything is in the way. I don't think I've messed with these points since I bought the tractor and replaced them 10 or 15 years ago. Some people ask me why I don't go to electronic ignition instead of using points in these old tractors and the answer is they're so easy to fix that I don't bother. The other reason is that if electronic ignition fails and your tractor dies in the field, you may have to wait for a mail order replacement to come. With points I can just run to the auto store, the tractor store and get new ones. Just make sure everything's nice and clean and put it back together. You don't want any oil in the breaker housing. That is very bad. This one looks pretty good. Gasket in and the breaker cover. Clean off the rotor contact a little bit. That back on. Cap. I want to make sure you don't put this thing on 180 degrees off. Number one is marked right there, and it goes in about the one or two o'clock position. We'll start her up and make sure we did a good job. If you're running old equipment on a farm, a grease gun is your best friend. There's about a million things that need to be greased when you're farming. 
The grease fittings on this tractor are grouped into some categories. The first are the steering and linkage grease zerks, tie rod ends, spindles. You want to check the tie rod ends for play. These are nice and tight. Pivot pin for the wide front end. Center tie rod ends. Front end of the wide axle pivot pin. Steering U-joints, sometimes these are a bugger to get at on tractors, but on this tractor they're pretty easy. And there's two of them. Top bushing on the steering column. Next category is the pedals and pedal linkages. Clutch pedal where it rides on the shaft. Clutch linkage. Some tractors will have a bar that runs all the way through that is the clutch linkage that engages with the throwout bearing. On those tractors you need to grease the zerk on both sides of the torque tube. Brake pedal on the other side. Grease the rock shafts on the hydraulic system. Grease the outer axle bearings. This tractor's got a two-point hitch, so there's a whole mess of grease fittings on the hitch system. If your tractor's just a straight drawbar, no greasing needed. These grease fittings rarely take grease on these old pivot pins, so what I do is I smear some grease and then raise the hitch up and down, and they lubricate. Clutch throwout bearing. There's a little removable cover here, and of course, the mice always get into the bell housing. And if you look in here, you can just barely see the grease zerk. Now, you don't want to put too much grease in here because if you over grease it, you'll wind up with grease on the clutch pressure plate and your clutch won't work right. Here's something I always check too. There's an inspection hole on the bottom of the bell housing. And there is always some mouse debris in there, which I clean out. I don't want that sitting in there and rusting the clutch up. So the mice come in through here where the clutch linkage runs in and then they build nests in the bell housing inevitably. So just needs a cleaning. Oh, there's a chicken feather. Wonder where that came from. There's a few other lubrication points. Um, the first one is on the distributor in the drive here. There's a drive bushing in here and you take out this plug, screw in a grease cirque and grease it a little bit. This only happens once in a great while because what happens if you put too much grease in here it makes its way back in and may get into the breaker housing. The other place sometimes you have to lubricate especially on the old H's and M's and if it has an old starter on it is the starter bushings will have a lubrication cup on the top here and it'll have a tube running down to the bushing. You just flip open the cap and put a couple drops of engine oil in there to lubricate those. Same on the generator if it's equipped with them. Yeah, see the generator on this has one of those. Here's a flip cap, lubricates the bushing down here. Fan hub on these tractors has a funky lubrication method. There is a screw on the side of the... Ah, there is a screw on the side of it. Which of course is tighter than tight. And you take that screw out and there's a standpipe connected on the inside. You take oil, and it's just 30 weight oil, and you squirt it in there until it overflows, which sometimes takes a while. There we go. And then, this is the really funky part, you turn the pulley till it's upside down, and you let the oil drain out. And there's a standpipe in there that keeps the oil at the right level once it drains out. And then you just rotate the pulley back around and put the screw back in. The last thing to do is check the air in the tires. These big rear tires don't take a lot of pressure. I usually run them at about 14 PSI. And these are calcium chloride filled. They're filled with liquid to give them weight. Now that solution runs at about this level in the tire. The rest of the tire down here is full. So when you're adding or checking the air pressure, have the valve stem at the top of the travel so that the calcium chloride stays inside the tire. Calcium chloride is really corrosive, and if you have a slow leak, it'll eat these steel rims in no time. In fact, it'll eat this brass and this valve core in here, 
after a while too. So you always have to check these and make sure they're not starting to rot through. People run beet juice in them now, which is the non-corrosive alternative, but this came with calcium chloride and so that's what it's got in it. And the tire needs some air. Front tire's nothing special here, about 30 pounds of air. Another thing you want to pay some attention to is the steering box. Now these internationals seem to all have one thing in common, and that is that the steering box is a pain in the butt to get to. But there's a gearbox down here, and it's behind this cowl in the center of the tractor that's got the steering gears in it. I went through this steering box when I got the tractor. I replaced all the seals so I know it's tight, it doesn't leak, it's full of oil. I don't check it. If you've got an old steering box and you open it up and it's dry when you check the level, you can fill it with corn head grease, which is a flowable type of grease. It's a lot less viscous than normal lubrication grease, but it's um, viscous enough so that it won't flow past the seals. So it's a good alternative to rebuilding the seals on the steering box and keeping it lubricated at the same time. So that's full service on the old Super C. I like reliable old tractors, ones that won't leave me high and dry in the field. And one way to keep them reliable is to catch problems before the tractor dies on you by doing a full service at least once a year. And if you give your tractor some love, it'll give you some love back. I'm feeling the love from the Super C right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful and have a great day.